Welcome to the Miami Construction Forum video series where we discuss current topics of interest from getting paid in safety to bonding and insurance. The Miami Construction Forum is an invitation-only group of construction professionals of all sizes and trades that meets monthly for an informal lunch and learn session. To see the upcoming topics and request your own invitation, visit MiamiConstructionForum.com. This uh, truly is a pleasure. My name is Jose Diaz. I'm the co-founder and co-owner of Compass Office Solutions. On February 2nd, we're going to be 11 years old. And, uh, and actually, I'm born and raised right here in Miami Springs. So this is like I've seen this property go through all its evolutions. So it's pretty interesting. It's the first time I'm in the building since the renovation. But uh, let me see by a show of hands. How many people have been in South Florida more than 30 years? Okay, that's pretty good, that'll help. How many people, of the people that have been here for more than 30 years, how many people are into boating? Okay, good. So over the past 50 years that I've lived in South Florida and over the past 50 years that I've been a boater, there's something that really caught my attention. And that is my dad used to take us every weekend to Elliott Key. And we'd leave from Black Point Marina, for those that might know where that is, it's not that important, but we'd go across the bay to Elliott Key, spend Sunday, and then come back at the end of the day. And on the way back, this is before GPS, for people that understand that there was a time <laughs> when there wasn't GPS, you had to know your way back, either compass heading or a visual landmark. And there was a series of pine trees that were there on the coastline of Black Point that indicated more or less it's between the tree that's bent and the little one that's higher, that's sort of where we got to go. And we can find our way back late on Sunday after a great time with the family. And then over time, a couple of things happened. One thing was Hurricane Andrew, which knocked down all the pine trees. They were gone. And, and the growth of Miami. And all of a sudden, instead of pine trees, there was a mountain there. It's called Mount Trashmore, right? You guys know that mountain that's there? So now if you go to the Key, you can't not see it because it's monstrous. It's a, literally a mountain. And if you drive the turnpike, you see the same thing. There's one right up there on Miramar Parkway, and there's one right up there uh, in Pompano that you can drive by and either smell or see. And a big component of what's on those big mountains is the work we do. All of us somehow are involved in the construction industry, and the growth of Miami creates a ton of waste. And when we built our company <coughs> 11 years ago, a lot of what we built our company around was figuring out a better way, a better way of doing everything, and our space is about figuring out a better way of building commercial interior offices for commercial environments. And when we look at that mountain, we're like, man, what a waste. What a waste of materials. What a waste of, of energy. Uh, because we work with organizations just like all of yours, right? Uh, contractors, um, AV uh, providers, flooring providers, all the people that come together to build the working environment that either all of you occupy for your own offices and your own business, or that all of your clients occupy for their business. And we knew, we knew when we built our company that we had to figure out a group of very reliable partners that we can count on to work as part of our team to figure out the best way to outfit that space. And as we progressed with our company, we, we knew that we had to come up with innovative ways of doing that. And fortunately, because we found good partners with good values and, and with expertise, we've been very successful over the last 11 years of coming up with a better way of outfitting the office. And, and a lot of that has to do with not just the first time when you get people into space, but how does that space live over its life cycle? Right? How does it perform? How long does it last? When does it have to change? All of the things that influence your business influence the space or theoretically should be influenced by the space. So, so we built our model around that possibility. And one of the things that we realized really quickly, and, and this is pretty common, is that buildings, the actual substructure, and this is a very good example because this was a Southeast Bank building, um, the, at least to my memory. Southeast Bank was one of the largest banks in, uh, in the Southeast United States. It was a massive enterprise. It's the company that built what now is called the Miami Center downtown, which is, it was the largest building downtown, right? 
That company since gone out of business, and this building went to multiple tenants, subtenants, and look, now they've converted into a hotel. So the structure survived, but the interior, man, they've probably built and unbuilt and torn this thing out, who knows, 10, 20 times in my lifetime, at least. And that, what that means is that the site never changes. This is a great corner, 36th Street Lejeune, phenomenal access, close to the airport, all kinds of advantages to the space. And then they built a good shell, a shell that would withstand the elements and protect the interior environments, right? And they put a different skin on it. I know that when I've seen, because I live here, I've seen this renovation, and they did have to reskin the, 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 the building. And then I'm certain that they had to upgrade the plumbing, they had to convert this from multi-tenant space to <coughs> hotel room, so they had to add a ton of plumbing, so somebody got a nice contract out of here. And um, the one factor that, that was affecting this building before is that the space plan, every three to seven to 10 years, there's gonna be a lease that's gonna come due and a new tenant coming in. So that means tear everything out and start over again. So that doesn't even take into account that the people who occupy that space inside that lease, their business is gonna change. New competitors, new technology, new ideas, maybe a new business, a new boss that says, hey, maybe Joe should be near Mary or Mary should be near Joe. So interior wise, the building, your space has to change dramatically if you're gonna be able to react to the changing demands of business. So looking at this, we <laughs> said, man, there's gotta be a better way of doing this and and we formed a partnership with uh, with a company that we we met eight years ago that started their business like a year before ours that that went after uh, the the concept of the old way of building things it's the way things have been built with stud and with uh, conduit and with drywall is a concept that started at the beginning of the century and what do we interact with as businesses that is the same today as it was the, in the year 1900, right? Pretty much the only thing that's involved in business that's the same is drywall. So drywall is still the exact same way. Stud drywall construction is still done exactly the same way with almost zero innovation. And it's very fixed, it's very rigid, it, it creates a lot of waste, it, and it also, most importantly, it restricts a business's capacity to grow, change, expand, react to the changing needs of the marketplace. So with this organization, DIRT, we formed a partnership here in South Florida to say, hey, let's, let's introduce this new concept to South Florida. It's not just modular components that, like, like Bart was talking about, it's a whole new approach to how to build. It's taking what, what you're used to that's part of the interior construction and replacing it with an entirely different process. The results can be the same, and they can be beautiful, very modern, very aesthetic, and there's some things that are super unique about what we can do, but mo the most important component about this is that it is a completely different process to get to the same end. We're not following the same path that traditional construction uh, uh, requires so that, you know, the you know, the, the, the pouring of the slab has to go before the drywall and the conduit has to go in and then the drywall is a very linear <clears throat> process that requires one job to be complete before the next one to start. And that creates a, a standard schedule that is very difficult to change. You can't get from point B to point Z without going through all those processes and God forbid that there's a change order, right? And that means now you gotta go back to the beginning and start that linear process again, right? I see some head shaking, which means that you've experienced some of this frustration. Yeah. So, so all of these possibilities are possible if we follow the, the, these new uh, directions that we've learned and that we've brought to the market over the past uh, uh, nine years. And what that, what that requires is not just a new set of artifacts and components, but also a completely new kind of software, right? So we're part of a team that's developed a, a software that not only allows us to plan and design the space so that the space can be properly uh, equipped, but then also uh, functions as, a, as a, um, a parallel system where every time 
that something gets planned, a bill of material gets generated. And every time a bill of material gets generated, a, a visual image and a list of components gets generated so that at the end, the client can actually see what it is that's gonna be built. And the client can make changes and those running changes can be made so that the list of components that make up that space uh, allow for a very fast and efficient process. And not just the first time, like we talked about, that allows for faster occupancy, but the second and third time when you move things, change things, add things, right? Add technology and all the other things that have to be done. And, and the process, right, might be very familiar to, to people like yourselves that are involved in the industry, where you've got basically a raw shell, right? Whether it's first generation, a new building that's gonna be occupied for the first time, or let's say that this is a demolition, it's been cleared out and it's ready to go for the new, for the new tenant. And in traditional ways, that all has to be, you know, you gotta put in the studs, after the studs come the conduit, et cetera. But in this new way of thinking, what we're talking about is creating a warm shell where all of the overhead utilities, all of the HVAC, the drop ceiling, all of that work gets done in advance of any interior partition or any kind of interior drywall work. Once that's completed, then, the, then either the electrical system, whether it's beneath the floor, which is another uh, prefabricated solution that allows for taking care of easy access and easy installation of, of all of the utilities that traditionally would have to go above head and have to compete with HVAC and other devices, plus not to mention the grid and damage to the grid, et cetera. So by allowing a, rate, a low raised floor to be installed throughout the space, now you've eliminated many of those obstructions that delays and increase the cost of HVAC, electrical, and voice and data installation. Uh, but then once all the utilities are installed, then the floor finishes are applied, and that's it. That's the, that's the extent of traditional construction. From this point forward, now we can dress all unfinished areas, right? We prefabricate these components, and oh, by the way, all the electrical and voice and data and flooring is prefabricated, so it's not fabricated in the field, which takes much more time. Then we dress the, the interiors. Interior partitions go in, and because the utilities are accessible, we make the connections to the building utilities of all the partitions, uh, implement all the finishes, and the client occupies. And you have a complete space in significantly increased schedule and if done properly and planned properly at a cost neutral solution for the end user, right? Given the same conditions, if we take all the inefficiencies out and all the waste out of the process, we can execute a completely prefabricated interior construction project at approximately the same price as the traditional methods without the, the, the burdens of it. And by the way, traditional construction for the accountants in the room can be depreciated over how long? Come on, you're supposed to know this off the top of your head. It's 33 year depreciable, right? All of these products are not affixed to the, to the real estate. Therefore, they are considered by the IRS as, as owner-occupied, owner-provided items, which are seven and a half year depreciable. So not only is it faster, more efficient, but it's easier to finance off balance sheet, and it's also a depreciable that allows for accelerated depreciation for the consumer, whether that's the landlord, the end user, or the contractor with us as a subcontractor. So all of that opens up a whole new series of doors, right? It opens up the possibility of very special things to occur in space that in a traditional way, trying to execute uh, the embedding of technology into walls, right? How hard is that when you call right, automated engineering and you say, hey, I love this TV, but I don't want anybody to touch it because they mess with it and mess with the, the settings and it makes it difficult to control. Somebody could steal it, right? Nonetheless, I wanted to be able to do that. How do you do that? It's incredibly difficult. I want to be able to put messages throughout my space to be able to communicate the identity and I want to be able to com communicate the brand that I'm creating in the marketplace, right? All that requires third parties, multiple coordinations. You got to get the wood guy to cooperate with the glass guy to cooperate with the automation company, get everybody to agree where everything goes. The chances of the execution of any of these kinds of solutions going smooth are almost zero, right? But in a prefabricated fashion, you actually design it digitally. 
you look at it digitally. You do you digitally assemble it, make sure everything is exactly how you want, and then the execution is out of the box and into the space. The result is that you can create all kinds of working environments and solutions to all kinds of problems that otherwise historically would take way, way longer and give many more problems to the construction process and many more problems to the people who have to live in that, in that process. Here we have a, a solution where an entire elevator lobby is built out using interior prefabricated <coughs> wood panels, right? If you're an owner of a building and you need to maintain a lobby and the lobby gets banged up or you want to refresh, right? I just came from a CCIM meeting in Coral Gables where they were talking about uh, space coming to an end. There's a big uh, contraction. Uh, uh, the absorption rate of commercial real estate is skyrocketing. It's down to 8.9%. There's going to be a tremendous demand for, uh, for, for office space and very little supply. So the B grade buildings are going to try to upgrade to A and the C's are going to try to upgrade to B. But when you're trying to upgrade a building and you're full of tenants, right? That's a nightmare. Imagine if you prefabricated those solutions and implemented them into space. And if, any, if anybody's ever been to the City National Bank space on the 28th floor of 1450 Brickell, you can see this in play. The entire lobby section on that floor was executed by our company in this fashion. So it was all raw elevator space, and now it's dressed uh, elevator lobby. And any of those panels can be replaced, changed, fixed, added, uh, or, or reconfigured. So all kinds of different solutions are available. And one of, the, one of the interesting ones is the possibility of building spaces inside of spaces, right? The possibility of taking space that maybe is uh, uh, repurposed from a warehouse into office where actual enclosures could be created allowing for for exposure to the to the ceiling but still giving the possibility of creating private spaces um, which is a, is a whole new direction that this is going right with a, a very popular new direction is to have a lot of visibility into private spaces so glass has become a big issue right so glass the, the, the amount of glass being used in traditional construction is skyrocketing. However, when you create these kinds of, of enclosures, sound becomes a big issue, right? So how, and you could probably answer this, is it possible to create a sliding glass door or a pivot door where there isn't space between the glass as it comes together? I'm sure there's a way. But sure. it's very difficult, right? And it's even more difficult asking a glazer to pull it off in the field, right? But if it's a prefabricated solution from a factory, it's easier. It can be engineered and it can be done. And these products allow this possibility to be done. It also allows for all kinds of creative applications of your products into these kinds of products where images and, and marketing can be applied to the surfaces that in other situations would be very difficult. How do you, how do you manage those pieces? How do you keep them from getting damaged? How do you, how do you implement them into space in a seamless and beautiful way. Other materials can be incorporated. So a lot of people have the false notion that when you have a prefabricated solution, you can't have the other materials, the beautiful woodwork that, that you would do. How do you incorporate that? It can be incorporated into the solution because this is, is, this is not anything different than the, than the traditional space that you would occupy. It's a different process and a different method to getting to the same end. It could even be wood clad, right? These, are, these are, are wood panels. Imagine something like this that you would try to have a contractor build. You have to get first a woodworker that would want to work with a glazer, right? Then you have to get the woodworker and the glazer to agree on how all these angles are going to be cut, right? And then the glazer comes in, puts it in, and damages the wood, and the, the wood guy's blaming the glass guy, and the glass guy's blaming the wood guy. And by the time something like this is executed, it would be ungodly expensive to build something like this. But these, <coughs> these products are fabricated, wood clad in factories and delivered, assembled, allowing for amazing amount of variety in how things can be done. And as I mentioned, the solutions extend into the utilities of the space, right? Electrical is one of the one of the umbilical cords of our industry, that once something is electrically connected, 
And once conduit's embedded in, in our structure or God forbid, penetrated through a slab, right? Making a change to anything having to do with technology. If you want to add a TV, if you want to add some speakers, if you want to add uh, anything, right? It becomes an act of God. In fact, you need a permit for, for as simple as adding a receptacle. What if all of that was UL listed components that allowed for us to hardwire and have the electrician as part of the original structure, hardwire a hub. And then that hub was connected to every other component using UL listed components that could plug in, allowing a client, right, with proper aid to disconnect, move, reconnect, and reoccupy space, right? All just like we would disconnect or reconnect the TV in our space. The same with voice and data, right? The capacity of creating hubs where, where either in the ceiling or in the floor, hubs for data could be created so that you don't have this world of home runs where a bundle of 100 cables has to be run throughout the whole space just to be able to get a phone to Mary's desk. What if there was, was fiber run to central hubs and then that, that hub allowed for the, the patch cords to be run shorter distances so that if Mary's phone needs to move from the right side of the room to the left side of the room, it's just lifting that cable, running it to the other side of the room and allowing Mary to go from a right-handed office to a left-handed office. So all of these things are possible with this new approach to, to prefabricated interior construction, right? We've built our company around promoting a new way and a better way of building, right? We know that the world is pushing all of you to continue to compete and innovate, and certainly the world is pushing us to figure it out. And we're pushing the envelope. We, we, we think that there's a way to, to stop Mount Rushmore there in, in uh, South Miami and keep it from growing and keep a lot of that drywall and junk and things from, from entering the, the trash system and also allow our businesses to be more competitive, right? But we think that in order to do that, we have to be thinking further ahead. We have to have a longer term investment mentality than the three, five, or, or man, a seven year lease mentality. And it's, it's you know, build, trash, start again, right? For watching, to see the upcoming topics and request your own invitation, visit MiamiConstructionForum.com.